So it's quarter past six. We've only got about 15 minutes left to go before the sunset. And look at this beautiful, beautiful sunset here. So look at this scene here. Today, very different. We're going to have the sun setting here and we've got all these puddles here formed by stingrays. And we're actually going to use this as our foreground leading into this sunset here. And already I can see from my camera that it's actually very low to the ground and the light is just reflecting in these puddles here formed by the stingray so should be a really good thing to photograph so let's get the camera set up and we'll take some photos oh, that looks beautiful I'm actually going to set it on top of my camera here so that you've actually got two views so I've already got my Nissi polarizer on and all I'm going to use today there's a bit of wind around and all that. I'm going to use the Nissi three-stop ND medium grad. And that's it. I'm not going to use a ND filter at all today. If I fall over, it'll be a wet affair. Put all this back in. Put that in my back pocket. There's nothing to scratch it there. Close everything. Put backpack back in there. before I set it up so you can actually see now this is my view now understand the phone's actually recording in 6x19 so we're actually cutting a bit of the top but we've actually got a lot more foreground but you've got a very good idea of what I'm actually going to be photographing today and I'll I'll take just one photo here there you go look at that that looks so nice Foreground's a little bit dark, but in Lightroom, I can bring that up. But if the foreground's too dark, I might just go for like a 6x19 frame, because this actually looks really nice on the phone like this. So we'll slot in the medium grand. There we go. Now, because I've got live view, you can actually see where it's actually going to drop there. That's it. Now, settings. White balance is auto, I'm on ISO 100, F11, and I'm shooting at 1 2.5 of a second. Now, at the moment I'm on aperture priority, but I'm actually going to change that to manual. I actually prefer to shoot in manual, so we'll bring it back down. Here we go. I just like manual. Let's see what that looks like. Okay, I've blown the sun out a little bit, so... We'll come back one sixth. Now the sun's just blown out, but that foreground just looks magnific. And there's just a few little gum trees right in the background there, just in view. So it actually looks quite good like this. Let's see if I go from one sixth to one tenth, so we don't blow out the sun. No blown highlights, but showing a little bit dark. But the one thing I tell people is that it doesn't matter if your image is slightly underexposed. Most of the time when I shoot landscapes, I prefer to have it slightly underexposed than overexposed. Modern cameras, you can still pull out a lot of the shadows in Adobe Lightroom or Photoshop or your favorite editing program. So don't be scared if you can actually see that it's a little bit dark. As long as you're fairly close to a correct exposure, you'll actually bring all this detail out. So of course my gear always is, I'm shooting with my Nikon D500 and my ever trusty Tekina 11 to 20 millimeter lens. Now, if you've got an APS-C or crop sensor camera, whether it's a Canon or a Nikon, I don't know whether they make it for Pentax, the Tekina 11 to 16 f2.8 or the Tekina 11 to 20 f2.8 would be about some of the best ultra wide lenses that you could actually buy. These are just so good. They're built to last, they're heavy. And the reason why I like f2.8 lenses is because if I'm sh I shoot a lot of astro, so I can actually use the same lens to shoot astro. Now, like I said on the front, all I've got is a polarizer and the Nissi three-stop medium grad. 
This is just to balance out a little bit. Now I could use a hard grad here if I wanted to, but the problem is that I just want to blend the light and all that that's coming here. Now while we're talking, I'm actually, you know, like, we've only been talking a couple of minutes and I'm already well underexposed here. Let's see. Yep, so we're at one tenth. We'll come back to one fifth. Now what I like doing is, although I like looking at my histogram, I actually prefer most of the time to look at the RGB highlights because that's telling me how much of the scene is actually blown out. And right now it's just so tiny that it's actually showing me that the center there, we can't see the sun, it's actually gone behind the clouds there. It's actually going to give me a very nice exposure. Now most of the time I do shoot in manual white balance. And right now I'll actually show you what happens in a different white balancer. So we're in auto at the moment. So if I go to manual white balance and I'm, I prefer shooting at 5200 kelvins. So we take a photo. Now you can see that this one here is slightly warm. So I can actually just click back on white balance, take it to 6200. That's pretty good. Now let's see what happens if we use the presets. So let's try sunny. That's nice, a bit cool. Let's try cloudy. That's quite nice. And what about shade? Now shade will actually warm the image up the most. That's quite nice as well. But let's just go back for today. I'll prove my critics wrong and I'll shoot in auto white balance. There you go. Now, I'm shooting in all those white balance and I'm actually taking photos here in RAW and in JPEG and I'll share the RAW and the JPEG on the video. The JPEG will be straight out of the camera because that's how I believe a JPEG should be treated. If I'm going to crop, I'll crop it to show the difference but the RAW will be edited so you'll actually see the difference between straight out of a camera JPEG and then the RAW file edited just so you can actually see how much detail we can actually pull out from the RAW file. The sky is just awesome. Now what I have to be careful here is because we're on it's sand but like it's sand muddy I can actually see my tripod starting to sink so I've got to check to make sure that I'm still okay it's still showing me the horizons level my camera's showing me it's slightly out but that's probably just a holder but look at those colors it's just fantastic now let's see if I can just zoom in a little bit now, you can see on the image here, can you see that really there's only a fraction of sky, like maybe a hand span of colour and then it's just blue. So there's no need to add all that blue there. What do we really want? We want detail and it's in the foreground here. So let's concentrate on our foreground that's lighting up here and all that. So we'll just angle down a little bit more. Now we'll lift up the filter a little bit. That looks very nice. Take it off live view. Now I like shooting at f11. The reason being is just it gives me the maximum depth at field. And my focus point is not the horizon. If I look at my focus point here, it's actually, it's where that golden band that you can see in front of the, on the mud flat down that little water line. That's where I'm actually focused, about a third of the way in. And on an ultra wide, this is gonna give me infinity focus. So that's how I do it now. I'm at 1 2.5 of a second. Now the sky's blowing a little bit. Just bring that filter down a little bit. That's really nice. Now I can see by the highlights, it, the sky's slightly blown out. Now you can see like now the highlights have just gone. Now if I actually want to reduce the highlights, I'll just go one more. So one third of a second, that's it. My highlights now have totally gone because now like we're right on sunset, so the sun is getting very close to the horizon. We're going to start losing light fairly quickly here. I call this like the, it's the golden hour really until sunset. And then we have the blue hour. But you can see here now, look at the colors on the video. It just looks awesome. And on my, my camera here, these shots here will just come out, especially after being edited in RAW, will just come out so beautiful. I normally don't like shooting so low like this, but really gets to my knees and all that. But 
because today this is a composition that is going to work. There's no use shooting high. If you're shooting from shoulder high, even from waist high, you're going to be pointing the camera down and you're not going to get this low down effect. Now, I don't want to go any further low than that. Like you can see, I'm probably about 40 centimeters from the water surface and I'm shooting so close, like the camera's slightly tilted. Let's tilt it all the way down and let's take a shot like that. Now you can actually see from the video that I've actually tilted down and you can see these water puddles. Now my camera being 6x4, I can actually see a lot more sky than the video shows. So we'll take a photo. That's nice. Now look at that. There's a big stingray puddle here, just here. And it's funny because my tripod is actually just in the way here. Really if I want to, I should just move it, either my tripod a little bit or just come forward a bit. But we've taken a couple of photos here. How about we just move forward a little bit? Now we're losing light very quickly here, as you can see. What I've got to do is I'm just pushing my tripod down just to make sure that it's actually sunk in. Now I can actually frame my shot. I'm looking at the artificial horizon here. This is what's beauty with these LCD screens. If you've got an artificial horizon, definitely use it. If you don't have an artificial horizon on your camera, then you can actually get these little spirit levels and I'll put up one up here to show you. Only about a dollar or two dollars on eBay and it very quickly tells you if your camera is level. Now, we'll actually come in a little bit. What I want to do is I actually want to get rid of the trees from the, from the shot. Now, the only downside to this lens is you're shooting ultra-wide, 11 to 20. Ultra-wides aren't meant to be get everything in. They're meant that you can actually be very close to something. So if you're thinking that ultra-wide means I can shoot the whole landscape that's in front of me, that ain't the way to go. I like shooting ultra-wides because I can actually get in very close. So you can see on the video here just these water puddles in front and that's what I'm actually trying to get. And there's just a little bit more water there so I'm just turning the camera around just so that I don't get the trees. That's it. Beautiful. Now refocus. That's it. Same thing again. I'm actually now focused basically just on the water line which is really a third in. Take a photo. Now although on the camera here can you see the raw f the JPEG? It doesn't look much. But now look at the raw file. Edited. It looks great. This is the beauty of shooting in RAW. Now, I did a video a while ago, and I'll point it up here, and it talks about using picture controls, really if you're shooting in JPEG. And if you're shooting JPEG, definitely watch this video, because if you treat a JPEG as a finished product, then using these picture controls, you can actually get a proper edited image straight from your camera. No editing involved. And some people like doing it that way. Now, it's nearly quarter to seven. Light's fading fast. Some people, when they just start photographing sunsets like this, it looks very bland. They go like, oh, that's it. Color's gone. Let's head home. I've learnt from my mistakes way in the past that sometimes, I'm not saying all the time, but sometimes the colors come back. Sometimes 15, 20 minutes after sunset, the light hits the upper atmosphere and the colors light up. And I don't know if it's going to do it today, but I can just see a little bit of pink. We're just going to hang around for another five, 10 minutes and just see if these colors come on. Now, we've got heaps of photos here. What we're going to do is we're going to pick up all the gear and we're going to get closer to the waterline. There's actually a boat out there. We can't see it on the frame, but there's a boat out there. We'll actually get much closer to the boat and see what it looks like over there before we lose all the light. The camera can't see all this, but wow, the front here just looks magnificent. Focus in. Okay, so I'm actually going to have to manually focus. Live view's not doing it for me. Okay, that looks really good. Now it's showing here four seconds. So let's take a photo. Wow. Can you see that? Look at it. We've just got some water. It's just like a leftover. It just looks like a little creek just coming into the, from the bottom right hand corner into our image. And this is close to 11 mil. It is 12 mils. This is what shooting ultra wides is for. Yes, we're getting the whole scene, but 
we're getting everything that is right in front of us here. If I pointed to the horizon up here and just shot, it would just be bland. I want detail. Like I said before, I'm really challenging myself here. I was just shooting at around 14, 15 mils. I think there's a couple in there that are nearly 20 mils. There's actually a squiggle from a little snail here. This is how close I am because the camera's slightly tilted at 12 mil. Maybe a meter away from the camera. That's why I like ultra wides. Now we've just got a little bit more light. We're actually going to get much closer to the to the water here now. So let's go again. I'll actually put it in live view just so I've got an idea. I'm actually walking quite a bit up here. I just want looks like the tide's starting to come in. We've just got some ripples here. Let's see this. Yes. That looks very nice. Okay, that's a great shot. This is a beauty of summer nights. This twilight, or well, blue hour, lasts actually quite a long time. I'll have to refocus again. Now I'm actually going to come down to F8 because we're just losing too much light. I want to come in a bit this time. That's it. So we're at 20 mils. Have to refocus. That's it. Balance out the horizon. That looks really nice. Can you see on the video? Look at that. There's just ripples in front here. We're losing a lot of light quickly now. So even at F8, it's saying 13 seconds. So what I might do is I'll actually, after this shot, I'll actually bump up the ISO. Oh, that's nice. Look at that. That is just so nice. Before I move it, can I just tilt the front just a little bit so that we've just got more foreground, hey? There, that's it. Oh, that looks nice. Now, even though I'm taking these six by four, some of these I think I'll actually crop this one here, wow, there's that cloud. See the cloud in the top left-hand corner? That just looks magical. But right in front of the camera here, it just looks meh. So I'll probably do a crop. Don't be afraid to crop. Like, you know, it's your photo. You're not stuck at, you know, displaying 6x4s all the time. Let's bump up the ISO to 200 and we'll come down to F5.6. F5 and I think this just about does it for us now. The colours aren't going to come now. I think this is going to do for us today. So it's about 10 past 7, well past twilight. The colour's gone. We've had a good afternoon. I've hoped you enjoyed the video. Maybe challenge yourself to go out and take photos like this. As you've seen in the photos, like between the JPEG and the RAW edited, there is actually a big difference. But if you're just shooting JPEG and using the picture controls like I mentioned earlier in the video, you can still walk away with some really nice photos. So if you like the video, give me a thumbs up, subscribe to my YouTube channel. If you have a comment or some feedback, or if there's a photography subject that you'd like me to cover, leave it in the comment box below. I answer every comment. This is Charles for Charles and Photography. See you next time.